the TR3B anti-physics gravity of the situation explained as a tokamak fusion reactor. Superconductive plasma filled magnetic field circular vortex gravity disruptor reducer accelerator ring superfluid. These are the keywords I'm going to use for this title along with the TR3B. How? Okay, now this is the explan this is the explanation that's given. This is when everyone refers back to it. It's the origin story. I've got it as an archive dot whatever tomorrow uh, do below. So here we go. Mercury plasma put at a temperature of 150 degrees Kelvin, brought up to a pressure of 250,000 atmospheres, spinning at 50,000 RPM, reducing the weight of an object 10 to 1. I'm I'm oversimplifying it, but that's it. Okay, now I'm going to take it apart. Uh, 150 Kelvin is negative 189, 190 degrees. So since Mercury solidifies at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it wouldn't be a superfluid. It would be a solid. And it only superconducts at 4 Kelvin, not, not at 150. So it can't be a fluid and be superconductive. It would be. It would literally be a solid. Next, at 250 atmospheres, or yeah, 3.6 million pounds per square inch, that is a pressure level that, if you had deuterium in a container doing that, would change to an ionized metallic insulating fluid, and thereby achieve 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And a heavier element would be hotter under that pressure level. This is actually something that you can't escape if you're talking about an element. And uh, that all of that contradicts each other. It's a hot superconductor. Okay, in 2015 the highest temperature we have been able to achieve with anything to be a superconductor was an experiment using hydrogen sulfide at 203 Kelvin. Okay, so it's hotter. And that one was taken to 1.4 million atmospheres, so that's a pretty good reference point. And that was an experiment done using a compound, not a pure element. Uh, most of the high temperature superconductors that are available, in fact the ceramic ones, are all compounds. Um, the superfluid motion of pairs of electrons, Cooper pairs, within a cooled metallic lattice in a solid is the mechanism behind superconductivity. Superfluidity was considered to be a property exclusive to the fluid state, superconducting electron and neutron fluids, gases with both, with both Einstein condensates, or unconventional liquids like helium-4 and helium-3, which people love bringing up at the same time. Okay, At sufficiently low temperatures before the observation of superfluid-like behavior in solid helium-4, so uh, it has been conjectured that it might be possible to create a supersolid since 1970. At atmospheric pressure, most plasmas are at thousands of degrees. You can lower the pressure and then they'll go into a plasma state at, at lower temperatures. And in 2005, a cold plasma was developed that would work at room temperature. That's as cold as we can get a plasma. Period. If anybody has another example, that's fine. It has to be a sustainable plasma, not something that happens for one picosecond and then blows up the lab. I can be totally wrong about every one of these things. If you want to say I'm wrong, you have to point out how. It's okay, just, you know, do it. By the way, one of the websites that posted this says, I just saw this whole other thing involving a scientific paper, but I can't find it right now. So how convenient that that was posted a decade ago or something. Anyway, here we go. Now, the thing is, is that, um, here is how we go. The electric transport of in plasma, electron transport, is achieved by the standard flow of mostly electrons as they are lighter than the positive ions, the cores of the atom. While a plasma will eventually become a gas at, as it lowers its temperatures. Ions and electrons tend to recombine into a bound state that we commonly call atoms. You see, plasma state is the state at which the atom has its electrons stripped. When they recombine it goes back to being an ordinary atom, it's no longer a plasma. And solids don't normally do this because they have too much bound state, otherwise known as atoms. Elemental plasmas don't superconduct at the same temperature as they would be. They can't be a plasma and a superconductor at the same temperature because they can't. 
Uh, give me an example. I could be totally wrong about this. At room temperature, mercury magnetizes just a little tiny bit in the opposite direction of the source of magnetic field to oppose it, but only a little. And it is a very, very small, weak, negative magnetic susceptibility. Superconductors generally expel magnetic fields entirely, and this was not commonly known in the past when this story first came up. But now that every kid in school can do an experiment with liquid nitrogen and a ceramic superconductor, most kids are aware of the effects of attempting to apply a field to an already superconducting material, and then saying it's in a plasma state. A kid can figure this out, and yeah, there's a video where a kid actually explains this. So the claim sounds really stupid, and it did in the past. But again, most people didn't know what anybody was talking about here, and they just said, I don't know, therefore I will just believe what I'm told because I want to have a hover car. Superconductivity was discovered in 2000, excuse me, 1911, sorry, by studying mercury at low temperatures. By, I can't pronounce his name. You can then make a permanent magnet, it was found, out of a loop of any superconductor. Uh, the temperature at which the mercury is superconducting will get lower as you apply a magnetic field, so it has a certain limit. But if you can keep pulling the temperature down and keep it there, the magnetic field will become a permanent magnetic field like a permanent magnet. Uh, after the mercury becomes superconducting, you can just unplug the power source for the magnetic field and it'll stick. That's sometimes called forming a magnetic charge. And it will persist, the current in it will persist and flow around the mercury loop, making it a permanent magnetic field. Now, what keyed me into this and why am I bringing this up? Here is the assertion someone left on my channel because they were talking down to me, and I'm not talking down to them, I'm just explaining that the original assertion and definitions do the following. Each of the definitions for each word used contradict the next word in the sequence. There are modified versions of this, but the oldest one, and it's supposed to be right from the source, says a bunch of things that contradict itself. They are mutually exclusive statements. You can't have it at that temperature because it can't superconduct. You can't have it at that temperature because it can't be a plasma. Because it can't. So people throw in, well, maybe it was a mercury. The whole point of this is it's a mercury-based coil that's a plasma and a superconductor at the same time, and a superfluid while it's at a solid state because that's the temperature it's too low. None of this makes any dang sense. But anyway, here we go. I could be totally wrong about all these things. I'm probably getting all this wrong. Of course I am. Toroidal plasma physics based on rotating pressurized mercury has been around since the 1940s, if not before. And then, of course, what the person was citing is someone said, I can't find the paper on that. That means no citation given and no source. So, Laptech is so naive as to believe the U.S. has not or is not using experimental or advanced unconventional propulsion methods. I've never said that. I'm just saying you have to provide proof of this, or at least not use a bunch of definitions that contradict each other. All your talk of wind shear on triangular design makes the same stupid. I guess that's mid. It's misleading and irrelevant, since those plasma fields negate forces outside of the magnetic plasma bubble. Again, the whole point is, you're using a set of definitions that contradict each other for the assertion, and no, you're wrong. If you're going to make something that's aerodynamic in some way, why are you saying that they're negated? Why do you have wings on something if it doesn't matter? Next. So why not talk about it correctly? I am. I'm pointing out that these are these are statements like literally, first start with a scrambled egg, now crack the egg and you know and separate the yolk from the from the uh, from the rest of the egg. You can't do both. It has to be one or the other. It's literally the uns it's literally an example of entropy versus stability. These definitions contradict each other in the same explanation. It can't work that way. And no one pointing that out. Basically, I'm, I'm going to be in the real ill. The reason for that definition set being used for the story was to w filter out physics students because they would contradict it and oh, you're, you're posting definitions that are accurate. I'll just block you or whatever. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And yeah, it's a fake story. Bye.